Hi and welcome to video 8 on this video series for Unit 4, Topic 2 of Specialist Mathematics. And in this video I'm going to go through one example that is a differential equation example. Um, I actually don't believe that mathematically, in terms of the algebraic approach, this example is too hard. But it does bring in a lot from the chapter and from the, um, the work we've done so far. And it's just a beautifully complex question which works out quite nicely if you take the time to work out what you need to do. Um, so we're going to run through this one example in this video and, and that'll be the whole video. So example six, and it's not Newton's law of cooling. I just wanted to point that out. Let's have a run through what's going on. A space probe is fired vertically up from the surface of our planet with the radius of R. So it's vertically up, we're not talking projectile, anything like this. Um, if the atmospheric drag is ignored, the outward velocity V of the probe at a height H above the surface of the planet is modelled by this differential equation, where V naught equals U when H, well V equals U when H equals zero, and G is equal to the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the planet. Um, so we don't need to use negative 9.8 or 9.8 in this case. Um, we don't quite get that far. It's all very algebraic and theoretical, but that would be what it was if it was earth but in this case we're not told it's earth it's just surface surface of a planet um first a verify that v squared equals u squared minus 2gr over 1 plus r over h um suits this so we're verifying that that is true based on this differential equation now, it's a pretty tough differential equation to solve so we can ver when it says verify it means we can actually show that this differential equation comes from that so what I mean here is V squared equals U squared minus 2GR over 1 plus R over H. And I want to make the point here that U, R and G are all constants. Known or unknown. H varies and V varies. V varies as per H. So what we want to find is the VDH. So I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to take DDH of both sides where V is a function of H. Um, so DDH of this side and hopefully you recognize this as our good friend implicit differentiation. Here's my favorite thing in the world, a fraction inside of a fraction. I love it, except I don't. So deriving V squared where V is a function of H, I get 2V times by dv dh, the derivative of the inside, which is dv dh. And this is what I'm trying to solve for. Over here, ddh of u squared. u squared is just a constant, so that's just a constant. Um, of course, this is also just a constant. So I'm going to take that out as a constant. I get negative 2gr, and then I've got ddh of this thing on the inside, which I'm going to write as 1 plus r over h to the power of negative 1. And this is now a chain rule problem. So over here, I've still got 2v dv dh. And that's equal to negative 2gr times by negative 1 times 1 plus r to the, over h to the power of negative 2 times by d dh of the inside function, 1 plus r over h. Okay, now just simplifying here on the right hand side, the negatives cancel out, the 1 doesn't really matter, I get 2gr 1 plus r over h to the power of negative 2, which I'll fix up in a minute. And then deriving this, 1 disappears, ddh of 1 is 0, and then ddh of r over h becomes negative r over h squared. Negative r over h squared. Okay, um, so we've gone through and develop that derivative and now we can simplify this so I'm going to simplify this to be um, 2g r times r so that is this and this and I'm going to imply and put that negative in there as well but I put it at the front here now I've got 1 plus r over h squared times by h squared so there's my simplification there. And now I'm going to try and bring all that together um, because I can do stuff with the top and the bottom. So on the top, I get negative 
2g r squared and at the bottom I've got two square things so I can bring them together it becomes h plus r squared so I've brought in that h squared and made it one whole squared thing which means that it becomes h on the inside because the square is happening on the outside and h times 1 and h times r of h now of course this was 2v dv dh was equal to that so now I divide by 2v and dv dh is equal to this 2 with this 2 cancels out I'm left with negative gr squared over v h plus r squared and if I go back up here I can see that that is my original function um, so I've shown I've verified that this matches that which is great now I could solve that um, differential and it might be worth you having a go at it but it is pretty tough to solve um, and our u helps us find our c but otherwise it's pretty tough to solve and now part b says hence determine the minimum launch velocity launch launch the minimum launch velocity u for the probe to escape the planet's gravity so solving this now um, I've got my solution to the differential v squared equals u squared minus 2gr over 1 plus r over h now I'm going to just take into some consideration a consideration a couple of things okay first of all um, the question says hence determine the minimum launch velocity u for the probe to escape the planet's velocity, um, gravity so the minimum will occur when it just escapes the planet's gravity such that v equals zero at the maximum height required to escape the um, gravity now I don't know what that maximum height is but for most planets it's pretty big so that's going to be important um, so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to escape the planet's gravity by getting as far away from the planet as possible and we've got that minimum u value um, and it will depend on gravity as well so we're going to get an answer that depends on gravity and the radius so that's important as well so I want v to be zero and I want h max the maximum height required to escape the gravity so I'm going to put that in 0 equals u squared minus 2gr 1 plus r over h and I'll call this h max now what I want to um, point out to you is that the gravity of the planet um, will, will be important for a long time so really until you're being dragged more significantly by another body in space another planet really you're going to be attracted to this planet um, and it's going to be a long way away from the planet before that becomes negligible so h max technically kind of heads towards infinity now it doesn't head towards infinity there are other planets and it causes some problems but what we do know is that h max enough space to get away from the planet's pull is going to be significantly larger than r the radius of that planet that's going to be really important so h approaches infinity and in particular with respect to r it, it's quite large and what that means is that the limit as h effectively goes to infinity of r over h is going to be equal to zero as h as we get a larger and larger height then r divided by h will be effectively equal to zero and so that means we get this u squared minus 2g r over 1 which means that we get u squared equals 2g r and that means that u equals the square root of 2g r so technically if you if the initial launch velocity is equal to the square root of 2g r meters per second squared then this will have enough velocity and therefore momentum in the system to reach a height of infinity and there are other assumptions involved in this um, but we will escape the planet's velocity um, or the, the planet's gravitational pull so there we have it um, that's example six a really nice contextual question eh, probably a little bit beyond what you'd expect to see in an ex external exam but as we always say do the tough questions outside the external exam and the hard external exam questions won't seem that hard all the best